making a VR game is basically someone giving you a brand new toy box. But you can't mix it with your old toys. You have to relearn old things. People just don't look where we thought they would look. We have to have a really stable frame rate. We cannot have frame drops. This driver configuration, that GPU, this OS. No puzzles would work where something is in a closed room. You could just stick your head into the wall. Something goes that you don't expect. How do we guide the player? You can't take control from him because he will get nauseated. Scrap all the things you have done before and start from scratch. There are no rules yet. Everybody's working on their own rule set. So for every small issue, you have to find a solution in a creative way. A lot of new technology, there's a lot that can go wrong. In Crytek, we like our challenges, so uh, we knew it would be a challenge, but it was one that the team was eager to tackle. In VR, if the performance targets are not being hit, the VR world just kind of collapses on itself. It's not an experience that is worth having. When you're running a game at 30 FPS, it's very easy to absorb certain spikes. Like if your AI takes a little bit too long, okay, there might be a one long frame or it took 25 milliseconds to complete the task. But if that happens in VR, that's an immediately visible dropped frame. We need to render to fluid 60 frames per second and we are rendering for both eyes, so stereoscopic. 60 interpolated to 120 is the minimum that you need for the world to stay stable. If it was any less than that, the world would shimmer or stay in place or not, not follow up and then you would lose this sense of immersion. And during the whole production it was kind of like we had to hit a moving target, like the engine was constantly improving. In Robinson, we've done significant advancements in terms of how many draw calls we can actually process in, within a frame. There was things from streaming systems to the AI to just general level logic. Does this have to happen at this point or not? Can we move something forward by rewiring some of our code to happen simultaneously rather than in sequence? And also with the improvements like where we do single pass stereo, which means we half the amount of work for draw calls that we would normally have to do. Once the draw call improvements came in, it was a bit like the Wild West. We thought like, okay, we can just draw as much as we want. Uh, of course, it was not like that, but uh, we went basically from a budget from 500 to 900 draw calls, so almost double. Doing all this, we of course want to achieve the quality that Crytek is known for. That provided a big challenge for us. Achieved with CryEngine.